Hey guys, today we are focusing on how to find rate of change no matter how data is presented to us, whether it's in a table, a graph, coordinate pairs, whatever. So the rate of change is how fast the data is changing. All right, um, it's also your slope, okay? So that's where we're headed with this, is the fact that rate of change is the same thing as slope. All right, so how do you calculate it? Well, you set up a division. We're dividing uh, the change in y over the change in x. Now, some of you are thinking to yourself, Mrs. Andrews, I thought math got really hard when we started putting letters in things. Now you're putting shapes in things? Come on now. All right, well, let's explain what triangle really means. This is the, actually the Greek letter delta. And the Greek letter delta means um, the change in something. How did something change? Or what's the difference? Most people remember delta and difference. Difference means subtract. Okay, so that means how are the y values changing? How are the x values changing? And one more way of thinking about that is what are the y values counting by? What are the x's counting by? So if I was doing rate of change for this first chart, the top number, remember, is the change in y. So the y value is changing by going up by twos. So I would put two on top of the division. The x values are going up by ones. Okay, and if this is going up by twos, the next value would be seven. So I will divide two divided by one equals two. So the rate of change here is two. In our middle one, okay, our y values are counting by sixes. So this would be 22. This side is counting by threes. So my rate of change would be the change in y on top and the change in x on the bottom. Six divided by three is two. They're not all two, by the way, so don't get attached to that number. All right, over here, the change in y. Now this one's different, 60 to 48, that's going down by 12. These are still going up by fours. So my rate of change is negative 12 over 4, which is negative 3. Okay? <coughs> now, nobody does rate of change about nothing. Usually, we're going to be doing rates of change that are about something. Okay? So, if I had this chart and it was keeping track of the number of tickets that were sold over a given number of days, uh, the rate of change would still be... Um, our change in y, so our y values. Now, these are y values, even though it's na not labeled with a y, and that would be x. It's always x, y. Our y's are going up by 12s. Our x's are counting by 1s. So 12 divided by 1 is 12. It's nice when it counts by 1. It's easy. What does the rate of change represent? 12 what? Okay, well remember rates are usually something per something else, like miles per hour or something like that. But this is actually, what's this problem about? This problem is about tickets per day. Okay, where did these words come from? Tickets, day, and we stick a per in there. So that's what the rate of change represents in this problem, is that every day 12 more tickets were sold. All right, Bob recorded how many pages he read over a period of hours. What is the rate of change? Well, rate of change is how are the y values changing? Well, we're counting by 90s. And this side, we're counting by threes. 90 divided by three is 30. 
what does it represent? 30 what per what? Well, again, we go back to the headings in the chart, and it's pages per hour. Okay. Well, that's if our data is presented in a chart. What if our data is presented as an equation? Okay. Well, remember that rate of change is the same as the slope. And slope, remember, is m in y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to make the m bold. m. Okay. m, that's your slope. That's your rate of change. So my slope in our old word would be 2. Slope and rate of change are the same thing. Slope is just for graphs, guys. Okay, if we're talking about the same, the equivalent thing, but it's not a graph, it's not a picture, we say rate of change instead of slope. Negative 3. 150 is my rate of change. 2 thirds is my rate of change. Okay, if I'm doing word problems, then I'm looking, now we're not finishing any of these problems. Keep in mind, guys, that this is a three-day lesson. We're going to spend one day today just talking about rate of change. Then we're going to talk about um, finding the y-intercept. And lastly, we're going to talk about putting those together and making an equation. So there's going to be the end result of your notes here is that we're going to add stuff to it. All right, a tree started out at three feet tall and grew at a rate each, I see those key words around the number five. So in this question, the rate of change is five. We're going to do something with a five and the three later. But right now, I want to focus on just can you identify the rate of change? Identify it or calculate it. Bob was 100 miles from home. He biked home at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Look at all those key words that are pointing at the 20 for us. His rate was 20 miles per hour. A bowl started out with 300 candies in it. Trick-or-treaters came to the door at a rate of 100 every hour. So my rate of change is 100. A gym charges a $50 application fee plus $35 per, here's our keyword, per month. So our rate of change is 35. Okay, we're gonna, I promise we're going to do something with the other numbers on a different day. Right now I want you to either calculate or identify rate of change. All right, in graphing, rate of change, okay, we need coordinates. So I'm going to look for spots on the graph that cross grid lines, uh, horizontal and a vertical grid line perfectly. For example, this spot right here crosses this grid line and that grid line perfectly. So that's at 725. Make sure you put your x value of 7 first. Then I'm going to look for another spot that that works. Often the y-intercept is a good point to choose because it has a 0 in it. All right, so remember that rate of change is the change in y over the change in x. So the, the y values are 5 and 25. So how did the y value change from 5 to 25? Well, it went up by 20. There's a 20 point difference between 5 and 25. OK, how did my x's change? They went from 0 to 7. So that's a 7 difference. And then I'm going to divide this. 20 divided by 7, and it comes out 2.86. And there's a long decimal to it, but we're going to round because dividing by 7 usually gives us a pretty nasty decimal. Okay, So 2.86 would be my rate of change. So in the past, we did rise over run with these graphs to find the slope. 
However, we can't do rise over run this time because the number of squares going across and then up, okay, it might be seven squares across and it's one, two, three, four squares up. But notice my rate of change is not four over seven. That's because each square going up counts for five. So that's why it's 20 over seven, okay? I find it easier to just look at the coordinates and subtract, to be honest, than to do that rise over run stuff with this. Rise over run, I'll say it one more time, works great if you're counting by ones, but like here we're counting by twos. On the x-axis, on the y-axis, we're counting by fives. It's easier to do the coordinate subtraction. Okay, again, I see a nice point right about here, and the coordinates are 14 and 25. Okay, and another nice spot, again, I always aim for the y-intercept because it has a zero in it. Okay, rate of change. It's a fraction on top. What are our y values doing? They went from five to 25. Okay, that's a 20 difference. X's went from zero to 14. That's a 14 difference, zero to 14. So 20 divided by 14 is one point, I think it comes out 1.43, rounded. Okay, all right, let's look for some points that look nice. Uh, here's a nice one, three and 15. And here's a nice one. 6 and 20. So I don't have to use the origin. If I can find two points that cross perfectly, that's fine. So my rate of change, all right, my y values went from 15 to 20. That's a difference of 5. My x values went from 3 to 6. That's a difference of three. Five divided by three is 1.6 repeating. Okay, this one's different guys. Do you notice how our line's going downhill? What that means is ultimately our rate of change is gonna be negative and let's see how that happens. Okay, I see a nice point right here at five and 20. And, well, the y-intercept looks good, 0, 50. So, to do our rate of change, again, let's look at the y-values first. 50 goes down to 20. I should went down by 30. X's went from 0 to 5. The x value still is going up. Zero to five is going up, so that's five. Negative 30 divided by five is negative six. So that would make my rate of change negative six. Okay, so just so we're clear, for homework, you have this packet for me, okay? Um, again, if you are another math teacher stu uh, student, then what I'm about to say is not gonna really apply to you. Um, but we're doing this lesson over three days. On day one, you are doing the rate of change only. Each problem says rate of change, y-intercept, and function. We're doing only rate of change to be due next class. Only rate of change is due next class. On next class, we will learn how to find the y-intercept. And then the class after that, we'll learn how to write a function. Okay? All right. Hope that you understand what's going on. And see you next time.